Alright guys, welcome to This Week in Wrestling, covering everything that's gone on over the course of this past week, a week which has just ended with the news that Dixie Carter is no longer the president of TNA Wrestling. She's been replaced by Smashing Pumpkin star Billy Corgan, who we've seen have more and more of a presence on TV in recent months, and who recently became a minority shareholder after he invested money in TNA in return for a stake in the company. The news comes straight from TNA themselves, who issued a press release stating, Impact Ventures, the parent company of TNA Wrestling and Impact Wrestling, today announced the appointment of Billy Corgan as its new president. Current president Dixie Carter becomes chairman and chief strategy officer of Impact. As president, Billy Corgan will be responsible for leading day-to-day operations for Impact and its affiliated brands. As chairman, Carter will focus on long-term planning, strategic partnerships and global growth. So the important thing to note here is that while Dixie is stepping down as president to make way for Corgan, she's still in charge of TNA but she'll no longer be doing the day-to-day operations. Instead, she'll be in charge of planning TNA's future, securing partnerships and a lot more of the business side which I think will benefit TNA much more rather than having Dixie try to do both jobs as she has in the past. As for Corgan, while most people hearing this will find it odd to have a rock star come in and run the day-to-day workings of the company, Dixie seems to be pretty high on him and according to the man himself, this is something that he's always wanted to do and is fully committed to, which he proved recently when investing in TNA at a time that without that investment, it was widely reported TNA would be going under and that they wouldn't be able to afford the last set of TV tapings. So Corgan has already saved TNA once, but can he do it again? And will it help TNA take things to the next level? That's this week's question of the week as we ask what you think of Dixie stepping aside and Billy Corgan being the new president of TNA Wrestling. You can see Twitter responses across the bottom of the screen, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. Staying with TNA and at this week's Impact Tapings, they officially retired the King of the Mountain Championship after it was unified with the World Championship. However, in its place, they did unveil a new title, the TNA Grand Championship. The new title becomes TNA's new mid-card championship, but rather than replacing the King of the Mountain Championship, it is considered a new title, therefore it has its own lineage. To crown the first champion, TNA are holding an eight-person tournament, however, there are a few special rules in place, as the matches will all feature a time limit, and should they go the distance, then the win will be awarded by a team of judges similar to UFC. Finally, in the last piece of TNA news, this week's in the debut of Aaron Rex, who you'll know as former WWE star Damian Sandow. Rex came out to cut a promo in which he said that TNA had done what some are afraid to do in giving him a live mic, but that he wasn't there to talk about brass rings or glass ceilings, he just wanted to tell the truth and that his former employer shouldn't worry as it wasn't about them. Instead, Rex talked about the fans and the people who support him, saying it's always been about them, but he's been told he's too entertaining to be a world champion and that's why he came to TNA, because TNA is the proven ground where talent can go to get by on talent alone. Just like the likes of Bobby Lashley, EC3, Drew Galloway and a certain brother Nero have proved. He then went on to announce himself as Aaron Rex, which will be his TNA name going forward. Moving on to WWE, and our first story is a mix of both WWE and UFC, as UFC star Conor McGregor has spent the past few days taking shots at the company which have gained mainstream coverage. First up, he responded to Ric Flair's claims that McGregor stole his gimmick, in which he said Ric Flair is a legend, but what he does isn't a gimmick. He then went on to say that the old Jays of the game, Rock and Stone Cold, are all cool mothers, but the new era of stars are not right in the head and most of them are dweebs, before taking his biggest shot at John Cena in which he said, What's the main guy, John Cena? He's 40, he's 40 years of age, he's walking around in a luminous orange t-shirt and a headband talking about how nobody can see him. We can see him right there, he's a big fat 40 year old failed Mr Olympia motherfucker. So there you go, McGregor just says what he wants as he knows the press will eat it up and all coverage that he gets, good or bad, is good to help promote his fight next week, even if it did incur a lot of wrath from the WWE roster as various superstars took to Twitter to call him out over his comments. Moving on, and this week we've got an update on the WWE's new Cruiserweight division which is exclusive to Raw, as WWE have commissioned a brand new championship which will be debuting alongside the division sometime in September. At present, the holdup is down to WWE negotiating contracts with talent as they're reportedly offering various deals for stars to sign, both full-time WWE contracts, contracts with a certain amount of dates, or simply appearance deals like the one Kota Ibushi is currently working. Speaking of Ibushi, who's currently competing in WWE's Cruiserweight Classic, WWE have reportedly commissioned medals for the finalists, which is said to coincide with the eventual debut of the Cruiserweight Championship. 
Up next with news of a WWE release, as it was revealed this week that Joy Styles has been released from the company. Styles, the former voice of ECW, had been working on WWE.com and WWE's social media projects in recent years. However, this week in a live Q&A with Kathy Kelly on Facebook, Styles talked honestly about the company, including his dislike of the Universal Championship name, hate in the three-man commentary teams, and Roman Reigns' push, in which he said, Bottom line is, if our chairman thinks he sees a future star as a babyface, that's how things are going to play out. But the answer is, Vince thinks it can work. He's been right much, 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 much more than wrong over the course of the last 40 years. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to second guess the chairman. Whether those comments led to Styles release is unknown, however he did jokingly say in the interview that people would remember it, as this was the thing that got him released from WWE. Finally, in some news that broke last weekend, it was revealed Shelton Benjamin will not be able to make a return to WWE as advertised. Shelton underwent a medical with the company where doctors found he'd suffered a torn rotator cuff and that will require surgery which will keep him out of action. Shelton broke the news on Twitter where he said he was both disappointed and saddened to announce that due to serious injury to his shoulder, he would not be returning to WWE at this time. He went on to say he'll be taking a break from wrestling to undergo surgery and heal up before thanking WWE for helping him discover the situation as well as giving him the opportunity to return. So there you go guys, that was This Week in Wrestling, let me know your thoughts on all of this week's stories in the comments, including your thoughts on this week's question of the week, as Billy Corgan takes over as president of Tania Wrestling. As for next week, there won't be an episode of This Week in Wrestling as I'll be away, but I'll give you all an update on that and the reason next week, so stay tuned. Until then, I hope you all enjoyed today's video and if you did, I'd love it if you could drop it a like, but have an awesome day and until next time, I'll catch you later.